All right, everybody, welcome back to This Week in Finance, a weekly podcast by financial friends and hosted by me, Brendan Shima, where we discuss everything that has went on this week in finance, or at least the most noteworthy um, and important things that have went on every single week. Thank you for joining me this episode. We have a ton of good information to break down. Earnings has been going on all week this week keeping the news fresh and hot off the press. We also have some Elon Musk news, a little bit of news on Bitcoin and Netflix. So stick around if you are interested in all of those. And if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and smash that like button down below. It helps push this video to more people, helps grow the Financial Friends friend group. Um, And if you're listening anywhere else, go ahead, kick back, relax, get your workout going, whatever it is. We have a fantastic episode ahead. I am a little under the weather. Throat's a little uh, clogged up. Throat or um, nose is a little clogged up. Throat's a little congested. Whatever it might be, I have my glass of water as always. Um, so pardon me if I do have to take a sip. But let's go ahead and get into the news. So first things first, I have the earnings calendar pulled up for this week. We had Coke, Activision. I'm gonna just gonna kind of click through this here. If you don't have the uh, images, I'm gonna run through this, but. Real quick, just so we can get a general picture, Um, we did have a beat on earnings for Coca-Cola. Pretty bad uh, result there for Activision, a negative 58% surprise. Microsoft with a 1.83% surprise. This is all in terms of EPS. Um, We have Alphabet with a little bit of a miss. Visa with a pretty good result. Pepsi with good results. 3M with a 13.73% surprise on EPS. Wednesday, we did have uh, Meta Platforms reporting with a 7.09% surprise. Their stock is up substantially over this week, looking absolutely fantastic. Although, um, I'm still not super bullish on the company. Not a huge fan of it overall, but it's good for the S&P, so it is good for my portfolio. We do have some people, though, noting the fact that the stock is still down heavily as it's kind of crashed throughout uh, the last few months here or so. Um, Boeing with a terrible... (laughs) You know, was this a 1,000 surprise? I'm sorry, 1,000% surprise to the negative, to the downside, that is. Um, The consensus was a 26 cent loss. They posted a $2.75, I'm sorry, $2.75 loss. Yesterday, or today rather, we had Apple report, we had Amazon report, Eli Lilly reported this morning, it was positive. Um, a few other companies, McDonald's with a beat. I think Comcast was pretty in line. Um, but we are going to go over Amazon and Apple. I think those were two pretty big companies, right? Pretty big earnings reports. They're going to sway the S&P and the market um, one way or another in terms of general sentiment. Obviously, Amazon and Apple, both a little bit more in the consumer space. Uh, we did see Amazon shares fall. And um, it didn't look like a fantastic earning. Um $7.38 per share. I think they actually lost. It's showing here that it wasn't a loss. I was under the assumption it was a loss. Anyhow, not a great quarter overall for Apple. They recorded a $7.6 billion loss on their Rivian investment. Okay, that's a big factor here. That is part of the reason that earnings were not where they were supposed to be. A small beat there on revenue, but the bottom line did not necessarily live up to expectations. Amazon Web Services continuing to grow, although not at the clip that people expected. Now, the big thing here with Amazon this week was not necessarily their report, but rather the guidance that they are giving for next quarter. And the big theme that we're going to see here with a lot of these companies and something that I've been reading into heavily is the guidance for the next quarter on inflation, the supply chain, and the war going on in Ukraine. This is a big factor for many reasons. Obviously, inflation at 41-year highs, nobody likes to see it, nobody likes to experience it, but at the moment, you do see companies raising prices, passing those costs on to the consumer um, because they're getting higher prices coming into the service than they're having to throw those prices onto consumers. They're navigating, but at some point, the consumer is going to run out of money. The supply chain is not helping the case either, obviously raising wait time for products, increasing the cost of shipping, and getting those products to consumers, to consumers, pardon, is not fantastic. And so as we see the consumer run out of cash because of inflation and because of the state of the economy, 
we are going to see companies probably not post fantastic results. The culmination of all of this is more than likely going to spill over into Q2. So that's going to be between now, beginning of April, all of May, and then the end of June. This is not going to be good for Q2 results. Thus, this is not going to be good for stock market returns. This is also compounded by the fact that we are going to see, or we did see rather, a 1.4% loss in GDP when we expected to see a 1% gain. Now, we're going to touch on that in a second, but going back to Apple, we saw fantastic beats pretty much all around. EPS beat, revenue beat, iPhone revenue beat, service revenue beat, although not growing as fast as it was during the pandemic. Obviously, people are not in home um, as much as they were with the extra cash to spend. Other products did not beat. Mac revenue destroyed, and that's one of their strong points. iPad revenue up, but down year over year, which is not what we like to see. However, there's been some supply concerns with the iPad in specific gross margin growing as well, or beating on expectations, I should say. Now, the issue here is, again, not the performance they did have, but the guidance they gave. In general, you have a lot of people saying that Apple is one of the most protected and insulated companies from supply chain concerns and inflation. A cult-like following will help protect you from inflation, people who buy all of your products pretty much no matter what. Um, and in terms of the supply chain, you have a company now producing their own chips, and again, just the, one of the biggest companies in the world, right? You are going to want to get your product uh, to Apple if you are selling or supplying to them. They are going to be your top priority as they are probably a pretty high paying customer. However, Tim Cook made it be known that they are not immune to supply chain challenges. In terms of inflation, I think the company is relatively well protected simply because of profit margins and because they can continue to raise prices without consumers really caring at all. And again, you have a customer base that will continue to purchase even if that price does go up. I don't necessarily think there's going to be a huge issue from the consumer. Now, there's also some concerns for this upcoming quarter, uh, Q2, or rather uh, it looks as if they recorded uh, Q2 technically earnings already. So uh, they're Q3, but Q2 in general for, for everybody else. Um, the concern here is China right? China right now going into lockdown, things are slowly kind of shutting down. Their fiscal year or their fiscal quarter rather ended prior to any of that happening. China is a massive component of Apple's business. And so if we see shutdowns in China start to happen, consumers start to be locked down, issues with COVID start to arise there, that is going to be a negative on Apple earnings and on Apple revenue and on Apple uh, production, consumption, and Apple as a whole. So um, that is going to be kind of shown next quarter. We will see how that plays out. A little bit of concern. The stock was down about 2.2% or so in after hours. Um, so we will see where it continues to move as we continue to navigate this fall in GDP. A 1.4% fall, as I mentioned. We were expected to see a 1% gain. Clearly, that did not happen. We did have the consumer continuing to buy with the 2.7% rise in consumer expenditures, but obviously inflation is absolutely off the wazoo or off the rocker, whatever you want to call um, that. So it was it really up 2.7%. Are we just spending a ton more for our products? Well, the answer is we're just spending a ton more for our products. Also, the theme, like I've been mentioning, is as can inflation continues to rise, food prices, gas prices, energy prices continue to rise, the consumer is going to run out of money at some point. And that point might come when the word recession runs across the ticker on the TV. As consumers start to see, oh no, we are in a technical recession, technical recession being two quarters of consecutive GDP loss, they might decide to tighten the pocketbook up just a little bit. Now, we do have Ian Shepardson here writing, a chief economist saying, look, this is just noise. This is not necessarily signal. We're not falling into a recession. And I tend to agree with that. I don't necessarily think that we are going to see a real sort of recession, at least not in the traditional sense. However, we could see a paper recession or some form of, again, a technical recession where we do get those two quarters of losses, but things nowadays are insanely priced into the market. 
I mean, we're probably pricing this recession in now as we speak. So when that word recession does come across the ticker, you might see some people who watch the news every morning and go, oh gosh, we're in a recession. I should probably cut back a little bit. Um, if they do that, then we'll receive earnings after that be negative. But until that point does happen, stocks might continue to rise as people go, oh, okay, they announced recession. Well, um, we better buy in now because prices are probably as low as they're going to get. That's when we're going to start to see the uptick in prices is after the word recession gets stated. A stock that is definitely in recession is Netflix. Um, they last week, we reported that they had a 200,000 subscriber loss tanking their stock. Well, of course, immediately after that, they did mention we are going to crack down on password sharing because we are losing a ton of revenue on that. And so we want to make that up. What they have done um, in some countries, I think it was, we're going to have it right down here, Peru, Costa Rica, and Chile is started pricing uh, $2.13 for Peru, $2.99 in Costa Rica, and $2.92 in Chile per customer who is a sub-user on someone else's account. A sub-user is someone who is outside of the home where the account was created or is most often used, I would assume. And so if you're pinging right the service of the account from outside of where it was set up at you will now be charged respectively wherever you are two dollars thirteen two dollars ninety nine or two dollars and ninety two cents for that person now the person who made the account is the one that's going to be charged so my guess is they're going to have to start collecting on these people if it were me i would tell someone yeah stay on the account sauce me three to four or five bucks every single month you can stay on the account it's still a discount for you you don't have to pay for your own account. And then I make up a little bit of profit, can roll that right into my cost. Um, and it's a little bit easier there. So we might just see that happen. Uh, but my question really is going to be, does this get people to stick around? And are people going to be able to take this cost and decide, oh, you know what, I'm going to cancel my membership with this other person, I'm going to go create my own account because that's going to help the top line and more than likely the bottom line for Netflix. But if people decide that, you know what, I really don't want to continue the service if I have to pay for it. I just wanted to kind of freeload and get the service for, for free. Um, then we will see the bottom line get hurt for Netflix. So if they don't come out or give people a reason to stay with quality, quality entertainment and new shows, more than likely this could hurt their bottom line. This could hurt earnings um, and revenue for the company. So my question to you is, do you think this is going to help earnings? The bottom line, do you think that Netflix is going to earn more because of this, or are they going to see customers who were freeloading and who are now gonna be charged in the $2 range leave the service and not create their own account and instead hurt Netflix's earnings. Obviously quite the opposite could happen. You could see people incentivized to just hop off of the other person's account, create their own, subscribe to the service for themselves, and that's gonna help the bottom line. I don't foresee that happening. I think Netflix is in a little bit of trouble. Um, moving forward, who knows, I could be completely off the wall, never take my advice, obviously, but um, I see this potentially hurting Netflix in the long run as people will kind of rebel from the service because of it. Fidelity is now offering Bitcoin. This is a breaking story, the one we're going to be talking about in terms of Bitcoin. Um, I think this is a positive development for both Bitcoin. Obviously, more money flowing in to Bitcoin is going to boost that market cap, boost the price of Bitcoin. And so all of these first time or new investors into Bitcoin are, well, they're going to be pleasantly surprised um, if a lot of people take this up and start to pump money into the currency. Obviously, this is going to be something uh, for these consumers, a lot of people, I'm sorry, not consumers, investors, their first exposure to Bitcoin, a 1%, 2% allocation to Bitcoin, I personally believe is a fantastic investment for anyone. It's not a huge risk, right? You're just investing 1% to 2% of what you're already investing, a little bit into Bitcoin, um, a little bit of a hedge potentially against inflation. It hasn't proved to be a fantastic one, um, but a hedge against the dollar for sure. Now, you could see that this just popped across our screen. So we're going to go ahead and cover Mr. Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey and the Twitter kind of saga. 
coming to a close. Now we're going to click on this story and I'm going to go ahead and read it for the first time. Elon Musk selling $4 billion worth of Tesla shares. My assumption is that it is going to be to pay for this right here. Elon Musk, $44 billion buyout of Twitter saying that he is going to help free speech. This is really the narrative that has been pushing by him. And I personally believe it is a net positive uh, for everybody. I think that Elon Musk is going to be able to do something very positive for Twitter, a space that has kind of been under scrutiny in terms of if free speech is really being allowed on the platform. Obviously, you have some, some left-wing people not very excited about this. You have some right-wing people very excited about this. Elon Musk seems to be a little bit in the middle and says that he hopes to be able to make both the right and the left side very upset, or if at least he's annoying both of them, then he is doing his job helping support free speech, allowing people to speak their mind and not be um, suspended from their accounts. Jack Dorsey stating he thinks that Elon is the perfect person for this. Now, obviously, there's a ton of turmoil going on at Twitter right now. Jack Dorsey had previously left. Elon Musk now coming in, purchasing the company. Uh, Parag, the CEO, staying at least for now, um, it seems. But all of the other employees a little bit shaken up about this, concerned about their job, concerned about the future for what they have helped build. And just overall, um, either very ecstatic or not quite very happy with what has been turning out. Elon Musk coming onto the company. People are making jokes already. He's going to come in and fire everybody. Obviously, some concern for that as well. Um, it's very unclear what exactly is going to happen moving forward. This is obviously the topic of the article you're looking at now. People not sure if he's going to clear house. People not sure if he's going to 180 the platform. People not sure who he's going to hire or rehire. So um, a very interesting story, one that we're going to continue to keep up to date on. One of the things that was just literally comedy gold, you had Bill Gates reaching out to Elon Musk, asking if he was interested in some philanthropy um, regarding climate change. Elon Musk responded right away, asking Mr. Gates, don't you have a short position on Tesla? Is that still a thing? Bill Gates saying, oh yeah, unfortunately, yes, I do. So Elon Musk shot back, basically saying, until you don't have that, and even because you do have that, kind of betting against a company that is trying to help climate change, there will be no philanthropy between you and I. Even tweeting a few things that I'm not going to show here on this channel, but if you want to check it out, go ahead. Probably be a link down below to something, or at least to this article, where you can then find Elon Musk's Twitter account and find that image. So, Obviously, breaking news here, you saw it come across the screen. Elon Musk selling $4 billion worth of Tesla shares. It was reported here, um, Elon Musk sold roughly $4 billion worth of Tesla shares uh, in filings with the SEC. In a flurry of trades executed both Tuesday and Wednesday, the Tesla CEO offloaded 4.4 million shares. I will go ahead and pull up Tesla stock here, down 17%. Well, I think it was over the last week or so, so obviously, a rough go here for Tesla and caused by their CEO, Elon Musk. We can see the stock here uh, riding near the 1000 mark uh, on the 26th and then dropping all the way down to, let's see, lows in the 800s. The stock at $854, down 2.2% today in after hours. <clears throat> Obviously, here he is selling off shares to fund his investment in Twitter. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, Tesla shareholders, I think everyone could expect this, kind of see this coming. But breaking news nonetheless. Glad I was able to break it here this week in finance. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Greatly appreciate your support. Greatly appreciate you sticking around. Let me know your thoughts, comments, concerns down below in the comment section. Go ahead, hit that like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell right next to it to be notified every single time a new video does come out on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, thank you very much for listening. Go ahead and leave a positive rating if you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.